The phone has been severely damaged. The screen is shattered and the back glass is broken. The mid-frame is deformed. Remove the display assembly. The face ID parts and the rear camera look just fine. The motherboard also looks fine. The battery is severely deformed. Get a new display assembly installed. Connect the battery connector with the DC power supply. Power on. The phone turns on normally. The touch screen is unresponsive. Take out the motherboard. We can see there is an obvious gap between the third space PCB and the lower layer. And the lower layer is badly deformed. We need to swap the lower layer. Place the motherboard on the heating platform. Heat for several minutes and then remove the upper layer. Continue to attach the upper layer to the PCB holder. Remove thermal compound covering CPU. Then heat with a soldering iron at 365 degree. Clean bonding pads around the edge with solder wick. We can see that several pads have come off the board. Among these missing pads, S7, S8, S11 and S12 are important signal pins. We need to treat them by jumping wires. The rests are ground pins and test pins. We can just leave them alone. Apply paste flux to the four missing signal pins. Heat with the pointed tip soldering iron. And solder 0.02 mm enameled copper wire to the four missing pads respectively. Once done, cut off the excess wire with sculpture knife. Then loop the wire around the missing pad. Apply some UV curable solder mask. Solidify under the UV dryer lamp for 5 minutes. Remember to scrape off excess UV curable solder mask. Make sure the soldered wire is exposed. Attach a known good lower layer to the test fixture. Then the upper layer. Get the display assembly connected. Connect the battery connector with the DC power supply. Get the motherboard powered on with tweezers. The phone turns on normally. The touch function is also normal. Judging by this, the touch issue is caused by the lower layer. Since the lower layer is badly deformed, we need to transplant baseband CPU, baseband EEPROM and the NFC chip on the original lower layer to a new lower layer. Attach the new lower layer to the PCB holder. Heat with hot air gun at 280 degree to remove black adhesive around baseband CPU. Then heat with hot air gun at 360 degree. Detach baseband CPU, baseband EEPROM and the NFC chip from the new lower layer. Clean the three bonding pads afterwards. Continue to attach the original lower layer to the PCB holder. 
heat with hot air gun to remove baseband CPU, baseband DE prom and the NFC chip. Clean residual solder and black adhesive on baseband CPU with soldering iron. Get baseband CPU, baseband DE prom and the NFC chip rebald. Solder the NFC chip, baseband DE prom and baseband CPU to the new lower layer. Attach the original upper layer and the new lower layer to the test fixture. Get the display assembly connected. Connect the battery connector with the DC power supply. Get the motherboard powered on with tweezers. Go to settings general about. Here we can find EMA serial number and modem firmware. Which indicates that the lower layer swap has been completed successfully. Next thing we do is to solder the two layers together. Attach the new lower layer to the specialized reballing mold. Cover the new lower layer with the matched reballing stencil. Smear some low temp solder paste on the stencil. Once done, remove the reballing stencil carefully. Continue to place the new lower layer onto the heating platform. With solder paste melting, solder balls start to shape up. Once completed, wait for the lower layer to cool for 10 minutes. Continue to apply BGA paste flux to the third space PCB. Get the upper layer in position. Heat for 1 minute on the heating platform at 160 degree. With the upper layer sinking and paste flux flowing. The two layers have been soldered together successfully. Power off the heating platform. Wait for the double stacked motherboard to cool for 5 minutes. Get a new back glass assembly. Get the original face ID parts and rear camera installed. Then get the motherboard installed and flex cables connected. Get a new battery installed. Then get the original earpiece speaker and sensor assembly installed onto the new screen. Connect the original screen with the display extended module. Read data of the original screen with the True Tone Repair Programmer. Once done, connect the new screen with the display extended module. Write stored data of the original screen to the new screen. Get the new screen connected. Press the power button to turn on the phone. Run function test. All going well. However, the Wi-Fi switch cannot be toggled. We need to unbind Wi-Fi. Connect our repair DFU box to the computer. Then connect the phone with our repair DFU box. Put the phone into DFU mode. Open the software. Click DFU model. Then click query info. Click unlock Wi-Fi to have the Wi-Fi unbound. 
Once finished, click Exit Diagnosis. Disconnect the phone. The phone turns on automatically. The Wi-Fi switch is back to normal. iPhone X restoration has been completed successfully.